All right, um, I've been asked to do a review of the, the Orion 127mm MacCast telescope, and so I've had it for about a week now, taken it out three or four times, and I've really enjoyed being able to, to use it. So I'm going to kind of tear this actually all down and start from the beginning and kind of do a review of each piece. So there's the telescope. Here is the moving arm. And the tripod. So first thing on the tripod, um, it's a decent tripod. Uh, you know, I don't think it's going to probably win a lot of awards as a tripod. I work in the uh, technical industry doing sound and audio and video stuff, and so we deal with a lot of different tripods. This is a very light tri tripod. Um, you know, some of the good things about it is it's light, it functions well, it does exactly what it was advertised to do. So some of the things I don't like about it is uh, this is kind of, you know, the way this system works here, it works well, but these pieces here, they feel kind of cheap, they're not real smooth. They do work, they do tighten down, they do hold the telescope. Um, the other thing about this particular tripod is that when you have the scope on it and you touch it just barely or you're adjusting the focus or anything, it will move quite a bit. So your image ends up shaking quite a bit. Um, to be honest though, for the tripod, uh, it's a good little tripod for starting out. You know, to get anything much better than this, you're gonna have to spend a lot more money. So for what it is, for the type of uh, system that, it, that it's using, um, it's, a good, it's a good tripod. So you have this little accessory tray, it's a plastic screw right here that uh, you set on and you just screw down. That actually adds a little bit of stability to the system, kind of tightens that up. But you can see this is kind of thin metal. I mean, this is not a tripod you're probably going to keep for the life of your telescope. This is going to be something that you use, you know, three or four years if you really take care of it uh, and you'll be able to use it. The thing that, that I've noticed so far is I haven't been able to find another um, tripod that would replace this that I could buy that would fit the moving head. I would have to probably upgrade to an equatorial uh, with a go-to system on it, which gets a lot more expensive. Um, as you look around. So you want to try, try to treat this the best you can. Uh, Orion, Orion or someone may put out um, another tripod like this as a replacement later, but uh, overall it's a good tripod for what it is. So um, that's the tripod. All right, now the go-to head system. And I'm going to include the head and the actual... Uh, actually, let me extend this out. Sorry. I'm going to extend the legs out and kind of get off the floor here. So you can just kind of see how this whole thing works. Those tighten down. It's all plastic and aluminum. You don't, you want to be somewhat careful with it. You don't want it to tighten too hard or you'll probably strip it out. This system right here, putting this on, works pretty well. It's pretty easy to do. It seems to center every time and not strip the gears or anything like that. Turn this around here. So now with the uh, the go-to system here, we'll plug it in real fast. Take our wand and our sync system. Plug it in. And it starts up does an initialization tells you this, the version of it and this is pretty much where you start from um, the only thing uh, I really like this system it's a little slow to respond sometimes but you know if you're patient enough and, and can use it it's really not that bad the only thing the bug that I found it always tells you that so you're not looking at the Sun blowing your eyes out um, when you set up the scope to do its go-to function you have to set the long longitude and lat latitude so these are my longitude and latitude settings. Now here's the, the tricky part that I found. Now setting the time zone, I'm in Central Standard Time here in the United States, so I would be a negative uh, six. The problem that I found is as I've changed this, and I'm going to skip through that real quick um, and do no. Now as I go back in the setup and I looked at, I don't know if it's going to do it or not, but observation site, and go through my longitude and latitude. See how it went back to negative six and I put it on positive? It has this little bug where it wants to stay with whatever the last setting was. So here, I'll change it one more time. So I went to positive, 
hit enter, escape, we'll go back in and go to observation site. Let's see if it's on positive this time. Uh, yeah, it's on positive that time. So it seems like it takes it every other time or you have to scroll through it a couple times. It took me a little while to figure it out, but I finally got it to stay on negative. And uh, there it's staying on negative. So I'll go through it one more time. It's on negative. So once you kind of get that set up, that's the only little bug that I've kind of found um, with this particular go-to system. After you've got that done, it works pretty much as advertised and uh, no real problems there. The biggest complaint with most people about the go-to is probably that its accuracy is not exact. Um, it'll get you close for the most part, and it probably depends on your initial setup too. If you if you will put in you know higher magnification eyepieces and really try to hone in, you'll probably get a better result than if you're just using like a 25 millimeter uh, eyepiece and centering it. Um, one of the good things about this is when you're on an object, say the moon or something, and you've got it set up and it's not exactly right you can center it and then you can hold the escape key for two seconds and that will give you the option to recenter the object back into the scanning system or the, the sync system. So you, put, you center it, you hit enter and then it really actually does a lot better job of holding the, uh, the place in the sky where that particular object is. So you can, you can go around and say go to Jupiter, go to Mars, or go to Saturn and then come back to the moon and it will be much more um, accurate with where the moon is and, and pretty much center it right back to where you were. So that works pretty well. It takes a little bit more to get used to. Again, probably not perfect, but for what it is and what it does, I think it works actually pretty well. All right, now the scope. So really, really what you're paying for when you buy this system is the scope. Um, you know, most of this stuff is probably not going to last you a lifetime by any means, but the scope uh, it is, it's solid. It feels like it's going to last a long time if you take good care of it. This stuff I think will last quite a while if you take good care of it, but you're probably going to want to upgrade this part of the system at some point uh, if you get serious about uh, astronomy. So anyway, here's the inside of the scope. Kind of check it out. Take the back cap off so it'll pass some light through there. You might be able to see that. I don't know. And then uh, we'll go ahead and mount it. Now the first time I did this, I slid it from the back, but you can actually, if you get the screw, far enough you can just kind of roll it in there. That way you don't scratch your dovetail plate all up. If you saw me do that on the first video you probably were like oh no don't do that. So there's the scope on. Now one of the other things that comes with the scope is this easy finder and it has a red dot finder. We'll see if you can see that or not but there's a little red dot that shows up and it's um, dimmable. You can take it up and down which is really a useful feature so you can make sure you're on a star or whatever you're pointing at, it's right centered uh, with it. The thing that I like about this is it works really well. It works as advertised. Um, I haven't had any problems out of it. And it, it really helps to find things and line this scope up. The things I don't like about it is it's kind of cheap. Um, but that being said, it's very easily replaceable. If you have kids and they get a hold of this, they're probably going to destroy it. Um, but it's not all that expensive and you can get a new one or you can upgrade again to a different scope uh, as opposed to the Easy Finder 2. But for all intents and purposes, this works pretty well. And it just slides in up here on top. And you go from the back, it's got this little capture piece here, so you don't want to try to slide it from the front. So it's actually made to slide in from the back and it stops exactly where it's supposed to. Screw it down, good to go. Um, to be able to use the Easy Finder scope outside or at night, you need to take it and actually align it to something uh, terrestrial. So you want to take your scope out and shoot like half a mile or quarter mile or something down the, the way and um, put the scope on it first and then take your easy finder and align that to wherever the scope is pointing. And that way at night when you use the easy finder, the scope and the easy finder should be pointing at the same thing. So you want to make sure you do that before you go out. All right, the 90 degree mirror. There was one discrepancy that I found on um, Orion's site. On the spec side of things, it says this is the 90 degree mirror star, but when you look in the actual what's in the box, this is just the 90 degree star, I believe. So it's it's probably the cheaper model, not the, the nicer one with the little um, compression ring and, and all those things. It's, it's uh, as you can see, there's no compression ring inside there. It does have a, a screw on piece for filters and things on the inside and it works well. I mean, I don't really have any complaints uh, about it, you know, overall. It's pretty much works as advertised. 
Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention is I believe that this particular scope, um, I don't know if you can see inside or not, but this particular scope, you're limited to a uh, one and a quarter eyepiece. I don't believe you can upgrade to a two inch. So, um, you know, you'll be using one and a quarter eyepieces with this scope pretty much exclusively. So if you have any two inches and you're expecting to use them with this, unless you have some type of adapter or something, you're probably going to end up staying with the one and a half. I could be wrong about that, but from everything that I've seen so far, I don't believe you can do a two inch with this particular scope. You can correct me, feel free, um, if you'd like. Okay, now onto the eyepieces. So it comes with two eyepieces. It comes with a 10 millimeter and a 25 millimeter. So, and these are called the Easy Finder 2, or no, excuse me, Explorer, fully coated. So there's the, the lens of the 25. Obviously just sits in the eyepiece like so and you can tighten it down. It's a good idea to tighten it down. And here is the 10. Um, so the, the 10 I believe is about 150 and the, the 25 is like a uh, 25 millimeter. It's about 75 um, times focus. So about 150, 75. You take 1500 and divide it by 25 and divide it by 10. That'll uh, figure out what you're shooting at. So um, these work really well. You know, I actually bought, let me show you this actually bought this Orion kit with these Plossel eyepieces, which is a 20. It's a 20 uh, millimeter and a 7.5, I believe. Yeah, 7.5 with uh, various filters. And then also a uh, Barlow, a short Barlow that comes with it, which is perfect for this scope. And these eyepieces are better as far as the optics go. But I found that, and maybe this is just the beginner in me, but I found that I enjoyed looking through the 25 millimeter eyepiece that's supplied with the scope more than I do the 20 millimeter eyepiece of uh, this Plaza that I got. Now, it's easier to look through this to me with my eye than it is the uh, 20. The 20 looks better. I mean, the glass is better. You can tell that the coloration's better. There's not as much fuzz or haze or whatever. Um, but I can look at the moon through this thing and it looks spectacular. I can look at the moon through this and it looks spectacular. It's just easier for me right now um, to look through the, the one that's supplied with a scope, the uh, Explorer 2, than it is uh, the one that I bought. Both of them are great. I think I'll probably get more into these as time goes on and I'll, I'll use them more and more. But I found my spells, especially with kids and things, it's just easier the way this is designed. And it may be the, uh, the degree. I'm not sure what the degree on this one is. If it's 55 or, or if it's 75 or whatever, but um, it doesn't really say couldn't find any documentation on that. But anyway, um, that's just something I've kind of discovered as I've kind of gone along here and, and ended up liking the 25 a little bit more. So uh, that is that. So let me show you how the scope moves around. So you've got the arrow keys. You simply just start pointing. The scope will start moving. This is about as fast as it's going to move right here. So you've got one through nine on the rate. You simply hit the rate key, rate, and then you enter um, the rate you want to go and then hit enter. And now I'm moving at a seven, <coughs> excuse me. And so it slows it down a little bit. It'll start slowing a little bit slower. We'll move it left and right. I'll upgrade the speed a little bit. The only thing I've noticed on the movement really is that um, sometimes if you, you hit it really fast or something, it takes it a second to respond. And also when I'm looking through the eyepiece and I'm moving to the right, sometimes you have to hold down the right key for a little bit and then it kind of, it's like the motor is spinning up and then it catches and starts moving. I think that's probably done intentionally with the way the motor design is. But um, if you're not aware of that, it may be a little annoying to you that it doesn't immediately start moving right uh, if you're holding down the right key as you're looking through the eyepiece, especially at like long distance objects. It seems like it takes longer, but I believe that's just part of the motor design to kind of uh, keep the accuracy. So anyway, um, that is most of the things that I believe I want to talk about. Overall experience so far and satisfaction. I'm extremely satisfied with the scope. Again, I'm a beginner. Uh, this is my very first telescope, and so um, you know I don't have the, quite the knowledge as some of, some of the other people in the astronomy field would of what to get and what they've seen and how how this all works but my overall experience has been great i mean i love the scope 
I can see in my future, I'm probably going to get a different tripod to put it on. You know, I may get into the equatorial side, which is a little bit more advanced. You know, I'm going to have to learn a little bit more about those things. Um, but I, I can see this lasting for, you know, four or five years at least. And, uh, you know, if I take really good care of it, if you don't let my kids around it and they destroy the thing, because that would probably be pretty easy for them to do. Um, but, you know, just kind of taking care of it and, and playing around with it and taking it out at night. It's pretty light. I mean, I can, I can, I won't, don't want to do it with one hand, but I could take it with one hand and, and move it. You know, it's pretty easy to, to pack up and take places and take the scope off. So, um, very pleased with the scope so far, you know, really, you know, the scope is amazing. It's crystal clear. I was amazed at what I could see on the moon and, uh, the planetary Jupiter looks awesome. Mars, Saturn. Um, you know, I think in my mind, I thought that they would be bigger than what they are. Uh, through the eyepieces and things, and it can be a little bit of a challenge to kind of get them centered, but that's just, I think that's just astronomy. That's just kind of how it goes, and that's part of the thrill of getting bigger scopes and better eyepieces and all these different things and um, the fun of it. So for what the price of the scope is and what you can do with it and the enjoyment, especially the automatic tracking, so you don't have to adjust it every five seconds if you're watching a planet or watching the moon or something, um, to me is definitely worth the price. I've thoroughly enjoyed it so far and I think I'll enjoy it for long into the future. And uh, hopefully that answers all your questions. If you have any other questions, uh, feel free to put something in the comment section and I'll try to answer them as best I can. So that's the review that I have of the 127 millimeter Orion MacCass telescope.